Okay, so I've had this guitar for a little over a year, and I feel bad because it keeps getting overlooked. It's a great guitar, it's cool, but I don't really play it very much or think about playing it very much, and I feel like I should. I thought I would pull this out today, throw some new strings on it, get it cleaned up, and play it. They did send me this guitar, uh, unclear if it was a loner or not, but they did send it to me. So about five years ago when I started this YouTube channel, I had a series of videos that I was doing pretty consistently. Am I? I had a series of videos I was working on consistently that I was calling Gear Talk with Red, And I worked on that series for three years or so. But about two years ago, I kind of put it on the back burner. I wanted to do other things. I've kind of got burned out on it. And I've actually kind of been missing it recently. I've been wanting to bring it back. And so we are. I'm relaunching the Gear Talk with Rhett series, but it's gonna be a little bit different this time. I wanna branch out from just guitar gear. Every day I'm down here recording and working on projects and I'm using mics and synthesizers and all kinds of recording gear that I wanna start talking about here on the channel. So relaunching this series is gonna give me an outlet for that. Instead of just having a company send me a piece of gear and saying, hey, can you review this on your channel? I actually wanna hear from you. See, the difference is now over the last few years, the channel has grown substantially and we have a great connection with Sweetwater and they are willing to sponsor and send out just about anything within reason that they sell that we can feature here on the show and probably give most of the stuff away at the end of the episodes. So I wanna know what you wanna see and not just guitar gear, microphones, camera gear, production, anything that you use as a tool to make something, to make music, to make content, whatever, we're gonna feature here on the Gear Talk with Rhett series. So let me know in the comment section down below and the comment that gets the most likes, I will reach out to Sweetwater and we'll get it sent here again within reason. You know, I mean, maybe they would send me a, a Neve 5088 console to review, that would be pretty sweet, so who knows. But seriously, I wanna know what you guys wanna see reviewed here on the channel and it's honest, transparent reviews. If it's good, I'll tell you. If it sucks, I'll tell you. That's the whole idea with the Gear Talk with Rhett segment. So let me know in the comments section. And uh, with that, we're gonna jump back into this video of us looking at the Revstar. <laughs> Star RSS 02T. This is one of the Indonesian made models. Uh, they do a few different tiers of Revstar. Mahogany body, maple cap with a chambered body. And then the neck is actually pretty interesting. It's got carbon reinforcement in the neck to help keep it more stable. So uh, that combined with like that sort of interesting tailpiece system and uh, their focus switch here in the electronics actually makes this a pretty interesting kind of modern guitar and they retail for like $7.99. It's a really good price. Let's plug it up and hear it. What amp should we play? Let's, let's go through the Black Cat. Oh, this is a really cool amp by the way. Bad Cat, Black Cat. This is part of their new line of amps, sort of British style amp with some cool features. So this is my AEA R92 um, ribbon microphone. I bought this a few years ago. This is my favorite mic for guitars. Really, like your favorite, favorite mic for guitars? Yeah, uh, I like ribbons in general, but I particularly like this one. AEA, they voiced this with high SPL, um, so sound pressure levels, so high volume sources in mind. A lot of times with ribbons, especially old ribbon mics, um, you have to be really careful of the volume going into them so they can be really sensitive in front of things like guitar cabs or bass cabs but this one was designed sort of specifically with that in mind and then in the effects loop of the bad cat i've got the flint which is going to be giving us our reverb and our tremolo sounds i don't know we we're just we we're just kind of talking for a second about like why 
why are these rev stars not more popular? It's interesting because like objectively, this is a good guitar. Like not just for the price, not just for, you know, under a thousand bucks import guitar. It's a good guitar. The fit and finish is excellent on it. The features are excellent. Like what you're getting for the money. And when you hear it in a second, you'll understand what I'm talking about. It sounds really good too. Like there's not many things in this price range that can compete with this on like a feature set and build quality. And I think it looks good. It's a cool shape. It's a cool color, but it has some things working against it that I think keep it out of the hands of a lot of players. And I think it has to do with Yamaha as a company and sort of their place in the guitar market. Like, okay, example, why is this called Hot Merlot? Like that's, that's a terrible name. It's like, it's not it's a bad guitar, it's that it's like marketed in a way that makes you not want to pick it up. I don't know, it's hard to say because do people like, do people care about the marketing of a guitar or I don't think about that. I don't, when I'm looking at this, I don't think about the marketing of the guitar. I don't know if what this goes in the video, but like Yamaha is cool to me. Yeah, they make cool stuff. They make some of the best pianos in the world. Their dirt bikes are great. Yeah. Their, their wave runner, their jet skis are awesome. You know, like it's a, it's a brand that is quality to me. When I think about the history of Yamaha guitars, I think about some of the more corny, you know, 80s jazz fusion stuff. And like, it, it doesn't feel cool, even though they've got some really amazing and unbelievable modern players. Like Chris Buck, for example, is a Revstar player. I think there's an uphill battle with the Revstar name and the brand that keeps these guitars out of the hands of a lot of people, which is a shame. <laughs> I have some thoughts on this guitar. The good stuff, first of all, the price and the build quality. I don't think I've played a guitar under $1,000 that is built as well as this is, or that offers as much in terms of features and sound. I mean, there really is a wide variety of sounds here. You've got a five-way blade switch here. You've got a bunch of different positions on the pickups, and then having the push-pull focus switch on the tone knob is a really nice touch. Uh, and I do think the pickups sound pretty good for the money. They're not my favorite sounding P90s. They're kind of bright, a little harsh. And then the focus switch, it makes it too dark. It's, it's almost like that EQ point needs to be different, but I really like the idea. The fretwork on this guitar is really solid. It's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but I don't think I've seen better build quality on a guitar in this price range. Epiphone can't touch this. Squire can't really touch this. It still doesn't answer why more people aren't playing these guitars. It is a shame. Like, I think the Revstar thing gets overlooked. And I think that's because I don't really think of Yamaha and electric guitars. You know what I mean? Like, I, I really do think this comes down to a branding and a marketing thing, as weird as that might sound. <laughs> So what, what's the deal with Yamaha then? I think Yamaha makes a really, really good guitar that people don't want to play because they don't think of Yamaha as making a really great electric guitar. They haven't done a good job of getting this Revstar out there and showing people what it is, which is a really great, lot of bang for your buck, versatile, well-made guitar that has a cool look, that has a vibe. They haven't done a good job of showing people that, whereas other brands like D'Angelico have. I think this is a better guitar than the D'Angelicos that I've played in this price range. And I actually think, in my opinion, it's a little bit better looking. 
and I like the feature set better. I think the build quality is better than the equivalent D'Angelico, but you don't have the same adoption of the Revstar brand as you do like the D'Angelico thing or the Supro revamp or uh, a number of other guitar brands. They've got the style, they've got the flash, they know how to do Instagram, they know how to do TikTok and all these other things, whereas Yamaha doesn't. They know how to engineer a really great instrument, but then they don't know how to make people want to buy it or want to play it. That's a shame because this is a fantastic guitar. I mean, honestly, it's really, really good. It's built incredibly well. It sounds great. It looks great. If you can kind of get over the Yamaha-ness of it, or you don't care about that, for under $1,000, I don't know that I've played a better guitar. So let me know. First of all, what do you think about this guitar? I'm gonna be reading these comments to see if my take on this is uh, is felt by others. This is a more casual place to talk about gear and tools and how to use those tools, as well as things that are outside the guitar world. Uh, recording gear, mics, podcasting, production gear, other instruments, all that stuff is stuff we're gonna be talking about over here. Uh, and if you would like some more information on the Revstar or any of the other gear we use to make today's video, I will have some affiliate links in the description from Sweetwater. Thanks for watching. Thanks to Phil for filming. I'll have his channel linked down below as well. We'll see you guys on the next one.